Let's work on the awesome topics of guitar solos and improvisation today. One of the biggest frustrations I keep hearing about from my students is that it's very difficult to come up with creative and unique sounding licks and ideas on the fly when you're improvising. So to work on this exact topic I'd like to show you six easy to use tricks and concepts that you can apply to your licks. And I'm sure that these helpful concepts will make your next guitar solo much better and much cooler already. So let's not waste any more time and start shredding right away. Before we begin, I'd like to show you a very shocking graph. It's pretty crazy, but still around 70% of you guys and girls watching these videos are not subscribed to the channel yet. That sadly means that you keep missing out on tons of helpful videos and exercises every single week and that you are not a real part of this guitar community yet. So make sure to join us today by subscribing and let's get to work. So for today's video, I'd like to discuss six bad habits when it comes to improvisation and writing or playing guitar solos. And of course, I'd also like to show you six very easy and helpful workarounds so that you can avoid those bad habits in the future. We are working with a super simple backing track in E minor today and let's listen to that one real quick. Okay, so simple enough, I think all of us have tried to improvise over a track like that already at some point. Let's start by checking out the very common first bad habit. This is probably how my very first guitar solo sounded like. I think you already know what I'm going for with this take. This is exactly how it sounds like when you try out a completely new scale or scale position that you just learned. So this is absolutely fine when it comes to internalizing the notes that you're playing or the scale position. But sometimes lines like this also end up in guitar solos or improvised takes, especially when you're not sure what you're doing and you can suddenly remember this one scale position you learned for E minor right here. And of course, after you play the first three or four ascending or descending notes, the listener will be able to tell where this is going. And I think you will agree with me, listening to scales being played up and down is not that interesting. But especially when you're starting out, you can still work with scale boxes and scale patterns like that, just to get a feeling for the sound of the scale. But my biggest tip and recommendation when it comes to that is working with small motifs instead. A motif can be pretty much anything you can think of, as long as it's catchy and kind of melodic. So a small or short melody a scale pattern or an arpeggio phrase, anything like that. By basing your ideas, your licks and your phrasing around this small motif that you've chosen for your improvised take just a little bit for a couple of measures, you suddenly create much more memorable and melodic ideas for the listener. This is just a small example of what happens when we apply that kind of mindset to the first bad habit take. So for this take I simply chose a small scale fragment as a motif that I kept moving through the scale and I was altering it rhythmically just a little bit for the second half. So still not the most creative idea of all time but it already sounds a lot more catchy than and so on just playing the scale up or down. By the way, as always, you can download the tabs, get the profiles and the backing track for this lesson on patreon.com slash Bernd. I upload these very helpful files for every single lesson that I post here on YouTube. So if I can help you with these YouTube videos, make sure to join the inner circle over there today. That way you will make much more progress with all the exercises and music theory concepts that we are discussing every single week. Now let's move to the second bad habit I'd like to talk about today. So this is probably how the second guitar solo I ever played sounded like. Let's even ignore the fact that I'm not using any expression or any emotions for this take, so no vibrato, no string bending or anything like that. Once again, I'm very fixated on this scale box that I'm thinking and playing in. And after playing a note, I only play the note that comes next in the scale position or I'm moving back down and then I'm moving back up. 
so I'm always confined to this system right here. So I'm moving up the scale, down, up again, down, and so on. So I'm always playing the note that comes next or the note that comes previously in the scale. And the more you think and play like that, the more you will realize that this is not exactly how very creative and memorable melodies are created. So one simple trick when it comes to melodies that will make you sound much more professional immediately is just spreading out those notes a bit more. I really hope that you agree, this sounded so much better than the first take. And once again, I didn't do anything extremely fancy right here. I was just spreading out the notes that I was playing instead of just playing the scale up and down once again. So I'm essentially just spacing out the notes and that immediately sounds much more interesting. So there's a big difference in sound when I play that. So there's a lot of room in between the notes and that sounds more interesting than, for example, always just playing the scale up and down when it comes to melodies like that. Now let's move to the third very common example. So this happens quite often when we're not really sure how to navigate the fretboard at a certain section in the solo. We completely base our ideas and our licks and phrasing around this one root note that we can visualize for the chord or for the song. And as we often discussed already, the root is actually the least interesting note we could emphasize in our guitar solo. So when you are improvising or when you're writing a guitar solo and you want that kind of section where you base your melodies and your ideas around one note, one center, I'd recommend going for a more interesting note or a more interesting interval, like that for example. So the harmonic center of this take and of all those ideas was F sharp right here. So the second note in the E minor scale, a major second interval. And playing that major second interval or the ninth, when we look at it from a chord perspective over that E power chord sounded much more interesting already. So next time you improvise, make it an exercise to avoid the root in your guitar solo and maybe even the perfect fifth. That way you will end up with much more interesting note choices right away. Now here's the fourth topic. That one is a bit divisive. So this time there isn't really anything wrong with the first take, it sounded pretty good. But a lot of my students are very frustrated about always playing the same kind of pentatonic licks or even just using the minor scale and the major scale all the time. So if you want to improve and spice up your improvised takes and guitar solos in general, another very important topic would be exploring more exotic scales and sounds. In this backing track I'm mostly just playing an E power chord, just briefly a D power chord. So that allows for a lot of harmonic exploration when it comes to my guitar solo solo, like that for example. So once again, this one is a matter of taste entirely. If you really love the sound of the natural minor scale and of the pentatonic scale, I wouldn't change that at all. But if you feel like you're always playing the same licks and you're always working with the same scales and ideas, I'd really recommend exploring different sounds. For this take, I was utilizing the harmonic minor and Phrygian dominant approach. So make sure to check out the notes that changed in this take with the tabs on Patreon to learn how this sound and system works. Let's keep moving and talk about topic number five right now. This one is all about rhythm and phrasing.
So the overall idea wasn't that bad. It's actually kind of interesting when it comes to the note choices, but I'm always working with the same note value and it gets very boring and repetitive and also very predictable, of course. So when you analyze your guitar solos and your improvised takes from now on, try to find out if you have any bad habits like this. For example, if you're drawn to always playing quarter notes or ideas in eighth notes or in triplets. If that's the case and you'd like to spice up basic ideas and melodies a bit, I'd recommend going for a more syncopated approach. So this take was kind of based around the same idea that I had with the first take, but this time I worked with a syncopated approach, so working with dotted notes for example, so that the accents keep falling between the beats and not always exactly on the beat. And that is a simple but always very effective trick when it comes to spicing up ideas without actually changing the scales or the notes that you're playing. Now let's move to the final topic and to my personal biggest guilty pleasure when it comes to all of them. So this one refers to always playing a constant stream of notes and that is very popular with shred guitar players and metal guitar players in general. I guess we often feel like we have to fit every single note and every single idea that we can think of into this solo spot that we are getting right now, but often it's so much more effective to pursue a more dynamic playing style and to let the composition or the guitar solo breathe a little bit. I hope you see what I mean with the final take and with the rests that I added in there. So I think this sounds much more pleasing and interesting to the listener and the shredding could also stand out even more by being placed as a climax of the solo in the end. So please make sure to experiment with adding rests to your guitar solos from now on. It's much easier to create tension this way and to work on an effective build-up for your entire guitar solo. I really hope that I could help you out on your guitar journey with this video. Remember to download the tabs, get the profiles and the backing track right now on patreon.com slash Bernd and get to work and start improving your guitar solos right now. In the end also make sure to subscribe to stay updated, leave a like in case you enjoyed this video and a comment in case you have any more questions for me. I will hopefully see you again in the next video, all the best and have a lot of fun working on this until then.